Hi friends, welcome to my channel PLS Saigyan. This is Sirisha and in this session we will discuss what is hold time in VLSI. Friends, we many times come across with the words like setup time violation, hold time violation, timing closure and all. So in VLSI, setup time and hold time plays a very important role. So we let us see in today's session what is hold time. Friends, I have already explained about the setup time in my previous video. Please do check it. I will provide the link in the description box. So what is hold time? What are the circuits which are more prone to hold time violations and how to avoid it? So for that, we will see today what is hold time. So friends, hold time is the amount, minimum amount of time the input signal must remain stable. The input signal must remain stable. Friends, observe here in the setup time we have the signal should remain stable before the actual edge of the clock. Whereas for the whole time, the minimum amount of time, the input signal must remain stable after the clock edge for the flip-flop to capture the data correctly. When designing synchronous digital circuits, the input data need to be stable and valid for a certain duration after the arrival of the clock edge. So after the arrival of your clock edge, the data must remain stable. If it is not remaining stable, it there are the chances of whole time violation. And what happens if our circuit is not following the whole time? So let us see one more example or in detail we will try to understand what is whole time. See friends, here we have two flops. One is called the launch flop and the other one is called the capture flop. In between these two, we have a logic called as the combinational logic. This is the D input provided to the first flip flop and this is the clock which is provided to both of the um, flops. So friends, here the chances are there that there is a whole time violation. Whole time, whenever a circuit is prone to whole time violation or whenever it has a whole time violation, there are the chances that it may not store the correct data. So a deep flip flop, instead, if the, it is supposed to store one, it may store zero or vice versa. So friends, suppose this is my second flip-flop, capture flip-flop. It has to capture the exact data what the launching flip-flop is sending. But if there is a whole time violation, like my data is changing before the active edge of the clock, that is setup time violation, then there are the chances that the data is not matched properly. Similarly, here also, if the data is not stable after the clock edge of the time, like after the arrival of the time, also the data needs to be stable for some duration. You will see here in another diagram where I have clearly mentioned how we can uh, understand what is whole time violation with both setup and hold. See friends, this window, as we have already seen in the previous lecture, that this is the time, setup time. So this is my clock. And during this time, the data must remain stable in this duration. It is not allowed to change. That is setup time. And after the arrival of the clock, again, there is a minimum amount of time. The data needs to remain stable. And this is called as the whole time. So during the whole time, the data should remain whole, same. The, the flip-flop should remain the same data and hold the same data. Otherwise, there are the chances that the data is not captured by the capture flip-flop correctly. So, let us see what happens if the whole time violations are uh, there in our circuit. So, friends, we'll see what are the circuits or which circuits are more prone to whole time violations. So friends, as we know that high speed designs, designs where there is a high clock frequency, the clock is running at a higher rate, there the time period for the clock is very less. So it gives a very little time for the data to get stable. So there are the chances of whole time violation. And the other kind of the circuits which are more prone to whole time violations are complex combinational paths or complex combinational circuits. 
where there is a complex combinational logic is going on, lot of delays, there are long paths with long delays and lot of computational uh, arithmetical or logical combinationals are there, uh, circuits are there where it takes a lot of time for the data and to arrive at the correct time and to remain stable after the clock edge of the clock. So these uh, types of the circuits are more prone to whole time violation. Skew and asynchronous interfaces. When signal arrive at different components have significant skew and when synchronous interfaces are involved, it can increase the chances of whole time violations. Skew is nothing but the variation in the arrival time of the clock at different for the different flip-flops, like we have a circuit with the different flip-flops as earlier seen friends in the previous slide, I have shown two flip-flops and we have seen the same clock is coming. But if there is a delay, if there is a delay and the clock is not arriving at the same time to both the flip-flops, then there are the chances of whole time violation. So if your circuit is too big, if your design is too big and there are multiple um, flip-flops and all are not getting the same clock at the same time simultaneously, then there are the chances of whole time violation. Then we have process variation. Process variation in the semiconductor manufacturing process can impact the performance of the transistors and introduce variation in the signal delays. Friends, this variation can affect the whole time margin, making it more difficult to ensure proper hold time in the presence of these processes. So uh, another kind of the circuits which are already suffering from metastability. Friends, metastability is a condition in which the output is not uh, predictable. It can be either one or zero. So in such situations, it is uh, also um, whole time also leads to metastability and metastability can also lead to whole time violation. These are all vice versa. So friends, we'll see what are the consequences of whole time violations. So when we have a circuit which is prone to whole time violation, we can say that it can lead to data corruption. Your data is corrupted. Whatever you are sending at the transmitter is not receiving at the receiving end. The main aim of our design is what you want to transmit from the launch flop should be received by the capture flop in terms of the uh, whole time or in terms of the timing analysis. So whenever in your critical path, if your data, whatever you are transmitting is not received by the other flop, then we can say that the data is corrupted. There is a functional error. What is expected for the circuit to perform is not obtained. The circuit is not performing. Your design is not performing up to the mark. You are facing some functional errors. Timing failures. The time, the when the circuit has when the design has to uh, perform the particular task at a particular time is not maintained. So that time we can say that it is a timing failure. Signal integrity issues. The signal, the way it is sent is not received in the same manner. It is, uh, its integration is missed. Then we have increased power consumption. The power consumption is a very important parameter in VLSI. We always strive for the low power designs. Why? Because most of the devices are portable and we want more and more application. We want to reduce the size. We want to optimize the size. We want to optimize the power. And if there is a whole time violation, if there are the data corruptions, the functional errors and timing failures, which may also lead to increased power consumption. So which is not at all tolerated in case of the BLSI design and metastability issue. See friends, metastability is a condition as I earlier said, that it is a condition in which the output is unpredictable. We cannot predict what it is going to get settled to. So that condition is very 
difficult for the designer to predict because the next stage depends upon the previous stage. And if you are not able to predict what the previous stage output is, then it is very difficult to predict the output at the next stage. So the entire circuit depends upon uh, the previous stage and the meta stability gets transmitted throughout the design. So this is a very critical issue. So whole time violation leads to all this kind of the problems which we have seen. Now, if we have a whole time violation, then what to do? How to fix the, this kind of the whole time issues? So friends, we have certain tools, we have certain methods which we can employ and we can try to reduce the whole time violations. So out of this, the first one is Timing analysis. Timing analysis is nothing but we have some timing analysis tools, static timing analysis tool, where we can uh, check the critical path for the whole time violations. We can uh, try to see the path which is more prone to whole time violation. We can adjust the margins and all, and we can try to reduce the whole time violations. Second is the buffer insertions. See, friends. Uh, inserting the buffers, inserting the buffers in the uh, or the inverters along the critical path can also help to delay the arrival of the signal and it can also provide additional hold time. So by placing the buffers, the delay can be increased to meet the hold time requirement. Next is clock tree optimization. Clock tree is nothing but the distribution of clock to all the parts of the circuit. We are providing the clock to different parts of the circuit. So we need to provide the clock in such a manner that every part of the design, every flop of the design is receiving the clock at the same time simultaneously. Then sizing and balancing. See friends, we all know that the size of the transistor also plays a very important role in VLSI. So taking a proper size of the transistor and balancing the um, parameters we can try to reduce the whole time violations. So adjusting the sizes of the gates and the transistor in the critical path, we can optimize the whole time. Increasing this, this actually increases the uh, uh, um, driving, uh, sorry, which, uh, increasing the size of the driving uh, transistor gate can help delay the signal arrival. It can lead to the delay in the signal arrival, thereby we can have some whole time for the uh, input and the, there is a, there are the chances of not getting the whole time violation. Then we can have a pipeline insertion. Pipelining is nothing but if your design is very complicated, your critical, you have a lot of logic in the critical path, you can break it down into smaller sections, smaller parts and uh, you can run. So there, by that method, you can reduce the Mm, whole time violation. Then we have the design constraints like uh, you can adjust you can adjust the design constraints such as the clock frequency to provide a larger whole time margin. Lowering the clock frequency friends allows more time for the data. It allows more time for the data to stabilize before the next clock edge. Reducing the likelihood of the whole time violation. So friends, these are some of the methods which we can apply and we can uh, come, uh, we can protect our design from whole time violations. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any doubt or queries, please try to mention in the comment box and please do subscribe to my channel. Um, it gives me motivation to make more videos and thanks a lot for watching this video. Thank you.